Hey team, Andy Hare here. It is such an honor to be back here at EPW 2020. Can you actually believe it? It's already been two years since I ventured over and made so many wonderful friends and ate so much ice cream, got lost in San Obispo, cooked a marshmallow down the beach, uh, ran the hills away from all the mountain lions and almost had my eyes plucked out by a vulture. But here we are, we are back ready to go with EPW again. And I bring you a session today which is actually going to be really meaningful for you as uh, California teachers going back into education, fingers crossed, but also looking forward and thinking about where we are moving with education and how I might be able to assist you in gaining some comfort and reduce that anxiety and stress um, as you make the progressions back in post-COVID um, and also post so many months being away from students. We've been back teaching now for five, six weeks. Uh, we are on winter break right now. As we're coming live with this conference, we'll be two weeks into our term three and things are different. So I'm gonna take you through a few things today as we move along. But first, let's connect. And we're gonna play one of my favorite games, Fancy Feet. Are you ready? Let's get up. Find a little bit of space by yourself and get ready for this.
How'd you go? Are you feeling really pumped? How's those legs? Especially when you have to stay down low in those positions as well. Fancy Feet, not Fancy Feet, is one of my favorite games I've created in remote learning and it allowed my students to be activated when they were at home at the same time. So let's have a look where we are right now. You guys are on summer holidays. We've got many of the world uh, ready to go back to school. We've got a lot of teachers already back at school, but the same problems had existed. So if we, if we have a look at this little slideshow that comes up right beside me here, we're looking at teachers' problems. Um, and then we're also looking at students' problems. And we're trying to create a solution for these because we're in the game of actually creating solutions. We're not in the game of creating problems. So one of our problems with our, our teachers and as adults as well is the anxiety and stress going back to a workforce. Um, we know how to protect ourselves, but if we're working with students um, or with other staff or with volunteers that are coming into school, we don't know their backgrounds. We don't know um, if they've been in contact with anyone. So it's about that reduction of anxiety and stress there. A second uh, one which leads on to that first one is the obvious one. Will I get infected if I go back to school? Um, our third problem is the stamina to teach a whole day. Now, let me tell you that this was one of the big ones that I suffered um, probably in the first two weeks. I was sleeping 12 hour nights only because I was on my feet for six, six and a half hours with 30 kids in front of me each hour um, and the stamina was gone. So I had to rebuild that stamina. And the third one is your school-based restrictions. A lot of these restrictions we can't um, work with and a lot of them our schools are governed by, when I say, sorry, we can't work with, we actually can't um, have any control over them. There are, they are restrictions enforced by our districts. Um, we're here in Australia, they're our regions. And we can modify them as much as we need, but it's very hard to actually go around them. So we have to abide by them. Our students are coming back with equal concerns. So one of the big ones is social concerns. Um, a lot of these students may not have had human contact outside of their direct family for eight, nine months. Um, now that, that's absurd. You, you can't expect a child to come back in. Um, and we'll go about that a little bit later, but come back into a social setting and be 100% where they were when they left. Um, the anxiety and stress, again, as equal as it is in us, it's still equal with the students as well because they don't know around them what the parameters are. Um, the social emotional um, tolerance. So looking at that, if I'm working with another student, um, I haven't worked with anyone. So, you know, that cooperative learning needs to be fostered and the physical and mental stamina. You are going to find that is going to be so low and then the tolerance for others is going to be so low. So there are problems. Now I'm gonna forget all that negativity and let's get on where you can actually really shine as teachers and great teachers. So tip one is all about you. You've got to love yourself and as we move forward, it's something that's really important for us as educators. And I want you to think about what is your actual role outlined in your school? What are you employed to do? For me at Leopold Primary School, I'm employed to teach 18 one hour lessons a week and foster yard duty support and also attend meetings. So if we trim all the other things that I do that take up all the extra time and thinking and stamina and mental um, you know, processing and physical processing, if I strip all that back to just that role, then my stamina is able to keep up with it. The second one is to understand your restrictions that are placed upon you and to be able to work around these. Not see them as a negative that I can't do anything anymore, see them as a positive. How can I reframe what I'm doing and get the best possible outcome for that? The third one is to address your concerns to a forum that's conducive with conversations. This is the worst thing that can happen is to have secret chats around the school, have that complaint mechanism where we're not addressing the problem, we're stirring the problem. We wanna be able to 
address our concerns and that is really imperative because hey we've never been in this situation before so to be able to address your concerns in a program that is conducive and through conversations then allows to build trust because other people are thinking what you're voicing um, the next one is to protect yourself and that is first and foremost because if you go down you're the captain of your ship if you go down then so does your ship and your ship is, are those around you, your families, um, your extended families, and things like that. So protect yourself. Create a new frame. Um, there, there are no personal handshakes. There are no high fives. There's no hugs. Um, and that is just the nature of where we are right at the moment. It's cleaning your hands all the time, inside and outside the classrooms. We have to do shoelaces up. There are children that will fall over that we need to pick them up but we actually then get into that hygiene phase and we will wash our hands and make sure that we're protected from that. Here in Victoria, we don't wear face masks. We're not um, governed to wear face masks to, uh, to school, but you might be. And what I really want to be conscious here is the CO2 um, you know, outlet and getting that out of your system because that is toxic um, and you, you want to be able to breathe that fresh oxygen in but also get the toxins out of your body at the same time So give yourself that breather Without the face mask to be able to breathe in that fresh air around you obviously not in a crowded situation um, But be comfortable with that at the same time and to remember that the rule of this is there are no rules around this uh, Schools are building them to suit their communities. So what suits you may not suit me What's happening in my school doesn't happen in a school three suburbs over. There were no rules built around this and our principals are doing such an amazing job to create an atmosphere where we're safe and we're supported. And who do you really need to have conversations with at school? Reduce your school social times. At our school again, we went from one staff room with 80 teachers to now 10 staff rooms with around about eight teachers in each. Um, but using your, your emails, using your DL lists, using your, um, your social feeds to be able to communicate reduces that time that you're being exposed to others in, in your school and still get that same positive outcome. Tip number two, your curriculum so this is really cool and this is one that I'm really passionate about and I think I'm so passionate about it because we fall into a habit and where we, we have been we've been teaching that way for a number of years we have our favorite resources we go to we teach a different way oh sorry we teach the same way um, and we all teach different ways that that's really critical but over this time we've had a lot of time to reflect and to look at different things so it's time to recreate I guess who you who you are and how to work with um, situations. My biggest recommendation is in those first few weeks, repeat what you have been doing in remote learning. There are students that haven't done your classes. And so rather than them miss out, let's consolidate what we've done and then move on from there. So you can really make sure you're not letting any child down from that learning. The, the second one there is to build in connection games. So group games, social games, where the students have a chance to be interactive with each other in a framework that fits within those restrictions at the same time. I mean, that is the greatest gift before any content is the, the connection based to knowing your students and the students gaining trust. They're coming to see someone they haven't seen for a long time and they don't trust us. So we need to build that trust. Keep that in mind is that they don't trust us, even though they do, don't get me wrong again, but treat it like they don't. So then go that extra effort to build that trust. Tell them about your experience. Tell them about the things you've been doing. Share with them, make that connection. As soon as you can make that connection, trust is in and you can then start to pick up the acceleration of your lessons. Um, design a program that's a, that is a repetitive, that allows a child to come in and actually know what's happening. Post up your lessons. So, you know, give them that idea of the, uh, the flipped learning approach where 
they already know what's happening next week in the class. It reduces the anxiety and reduces the stress of the wonderings. What is the space gonna be like? Take a photo, show them, use the same space for a month or two months and then slowly evolve it, just like we do with the build processes of games. We are slowly evolving what we do. For my, um, my classes, we've been using a lot of station games. Um, so moving around a similar experiences and moving ourselves around similar skills so the kids can gain that autonomy, but working in very small groups. So twos, maybe threes max, but only that pairing. Um, and then for our senior kids, looking at target games. So target games is a great way for our children to remain um, socially distant but at the same time have a competitive um, outcome. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm a lot of tongue twisters today, but having those outcomes there where the kids can certainly build their games, have a competition, and move through that level of social interaction as well to build trust and camaraderie. Um, having the self-navigation of lessons, choosing your own adventure. Here, we, we love our inquiry-based methods, posing a problem and allowing the children to discover the answer to that problem. Um, there is 100% research base there that show that children learn best when they discover their way. Um, and then that takes the angst off us as well to try and script a lesson or script a um, atmosphere where we're trying to really do too much. See what the kids know with that big question. Um, and also looking at those key inquiry questions along the way, poke the fire and get it happening. How can we move our bodies to perform skills in different ways? How can we demonstrate our understanding of movement to solve challenges? And how can we include others in physical activity are just great examples of key questions. Our third tip here is hygiene, wash in and wash out of spaces. Use that same common space. Anytime a child leaves that space, get them to wash out. Anytime they come back in, wash in. Anytime a teacher visits that space, wash in. Anytime they leave, wash out. What that does is it protects the equipment and it protects your classroom environment. Really be 100% um, selfish with that space as well because that is your space. You're keeping that space clean. Make sure that if you have someone visiting that they're washing that and washing them in and washing them out and keeping themselves limited to what they are doing in that space if they don't need to be there. Um, keep your space the same around you. I mean, you, you might be someone that is very interactive with students. Is it the right time to be super interactive or not? I'm not sure, I have to leave that one to you. I'm semi-interactive, my colleague is, is not so much interactive. And it's, it's just where we are in our journey uh, of that trust of what's happening around us. Again, if you're worried, Make sure you have lots of hand sanitizer around you, soap and water. Because um, the greatest thing we can do is interact, wash, and then we're away again. Because we're not passing on any germs, but at the same time we're not collecting them, scratching our face, putting it on our iPads or anything like that. Which brings me to my next one. I wonder how many people have ever cleaned your, your laptop screens. The smudges are there, or your, your iPhones, or your iPads. If you look at them and see how many smudges are there, you actually begin to wonder, hey, you know what, I've got to take better care of my equipment as well. So clean down your gear once a week, every couple of days. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you're in a place where your hygiene is lifted, and create that habit so it stays as part of your habit moving forward. Um, use the same equipment for each lesson. I know this is, might sound really tedious, um, but use your same equipment because this way not only do you get to protect that equipment and you're keeping that equipment clean, but it, it stops the need to be arduous in creating a lesson structure that was 12 months ago when there was nothing, no boundaries existed around us. We could just go with the flow. Um, and remember, it's not foolproof. So it, it helps, but it's not foolproof. It just keeps your area 
um, in a way that you can control a little bit of what happens. It does make me think with the hygiene, you know, especially with all our equipment, uh, I must have gone 20 years without cleaning footballs. Um, and the footballs are muddy, the footballs are touched with everyone, the footballs are sweated on. Um, but now, like, you think about it and go, well, maybe I should clean them once every couple of weeks um, and just get that, uh, get that cleanliness and hygiene happening because so many people are touching that equipment. Tip four, positivity. This is this is one I love the most. I'm a, such a positive person. You know, for me, I walk down the street and I scan for the positives. I actually do not see too many negatives around. And if I do, I'm quickly swiping them off and going, okay, I'm not actually seeing that. I'm scanning all the time for what is positive so I can really entertain my 10 year old self and just go, I love that, 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 I love that. I love that. Um, and that's the same with us going back to school. There are so many great things about it. And that's, you know, me being back in school was already such a positive, before I even taught any lessons, but use only positive language. Um, you know, if, if you do have someone that is, is not really coping too well, or, you know, we, we have those children that just don't, don't cope in class and, and they act out in different ways. What is a positive way you can interact with them rather than that negative, okay, don't do that? Um, because straight away that child's anxiety and stress is going to go up and you have to work harder to build that trust. Positive language all the time. Call out the positive things kids do. Don't see the negatives. Call out all the positive things that kids can do. There are some students in your class that have done some amazing things, my class included, that I have not recognized out loud. And when you call their name, their biggest smile come across their face. So I challenge you to only see the positive things in your class for a week, and then try to see it for two weeks, try to see it for three weeks. Make it a game with yourself. I trust you, you will see a completely different side of your lessons. Um, promote your SEL program. Care, comfort, and love. That is the, the greatest thing we can do. Start with themselves, start with yourself. Branch it out to each child. Do you show care, comfort, and love for yourself? And then allow that to expand to somebody else. Do we show care, comfort, and love for somebody else? Do it to the whole class. Do we show care, comfort, and love to our whole class, to our other teachers, to people in the playground, to those people that support us right around the school? That is the promotion of that positive well-being. Everything is okay. I trust these people. It's not going to be that bad if you know, someone has an interaction with me. That trust and that care, that comfort and love is paramount where we are right at the moment. Not just for this COVID stuff, but for everything that exists in our life. Um, promote gratitude and togetherness. Bring the class together. Celebrate every single lesson about something that you did really well, um, or the individuals did really well. And that connectiveness, that gratitude, get children to point out to others, I saw this person doing an amazing job, I just wanna say, well done. And get them sharing that language between each other's in class. And then promote connections, both physical, non-touch obviously, and, and mental. We want people to love each other and really appreciate what everyone has because what you have, you can teach me and put that into the mindsets of kids. Those kids that are really outstanding athletes, they have something they can teach someone else. And that child that may be your below average child, they have something they can teach somebody else. Your job is to try and find that and, and foster that and promote that because every single person is great. And then promote the ideal that over the past six months, students have had a chance to reinvent themselves. This one I love, and this one I guess you, you can't really do too much at school, but I wonder if you could do it before the kids come back. Have they learned something new? Have they gone from someone that potentially has been bullied most of their school to now being able to come back with those new traits and find comfort in the fact that there's a lot of time has passed potentially have people forgotten about why they bullied this person. Um, 
you know, the bullying is, is something that's big all over. Our school at Leopold Primary School is a positive education school, so we are the promoters of positive education in everything we do in language, and we really pull those children up that are not showing that um, respect and understanding for others, but we don't we, we don't discipline, we actually positively reinforce through examples that we see else around the school of their mates. So they can then see that. It does have its negatives, um, but we're concentrating on the positive outcomes of that. So those, these children have real life examples they can see. And then positive stuff, the independent thinker. So again, find that person in your class that doesn't do doesn't do or say too much, and really get into their head about what they are great at and you will see a huge difference in their confidence because they're number one they're seen and you've reinvented what your classes look like so it be, doesn't become a big scary place it actually becomes somewhere that they feel like they are the best version of themselves Energize, tip number five. Hey team, I spent my remote learning making YouTube videos and please, you must go check them out. Um, the, the energy that you can bring into a lesson is equal to your energy that you bring as a teacher. Use what you developed, okay? Or use mine, Mr. Hair Phys Ed at YouTube um, and bring this into your class. Start every class with an energizer. Bring that energy up to where you want it to be and then kick off your lesson from there. Don't come in, don't have them sit down. You know, don't say this is what we're gonna to do today because this is where we're at in our learning. Bring them in, big screen up or little screen up or know your energy in your head um, and get them into an energy promoting activity. A lot of pauses there, not deliberate. I actually got tongue tied again, but Bring them in and energize them up. Bring that level up to where you want them to be as your class and then burn at that level and really get them engaging at that level because you want them to be firing on all cylinders. They'll take in the information up here so much better. But the key to it is really getting them, um, in, getting them intrinsically motivated and primed for learning. And that is where we, our energizers really come into play. Um, you, know, you present your lessons, so your preset lessons, give them that idea of a flipped learning, but then give them the opportunity to bring in their energizers into that sequence. It might be a dance, music up, start them with a beat, now show me your beat, now show me your style. Mel Levenberg loves that one um, because that will then energize that lesson and it will keep that flow going if you see the energy dip have a break cut your lesson in two bring in another energizer bring it right up don't forget either uh, as well to have that de-escalator and the de-escalator in your class is really important it's about where a class is not performing really well um, or the energy or the energy is just out of control it's bringing a class back down no classroom teacher loves us when we send a class back to them and the energy that we send them back with is something that they can't work with we, we need to de-escalate and allow them to escalate if the situation requires it and Build trust with human interaction. Safe, secure, and inviting play. Play is the huge one. Invite the kids to play. Bring in that, that trust element there by saying, hey, I wonder if we can get off the pirate ship today and avoid all the crocodiles and sharks that are in the water while we're on this playground. How can we do this? There's um, the greatest game in the world, Floor is Lava, on any playground. Invite the kids to play. Get them showing their way of being able to navigate that system. Um, and then looking at different programs around, I'm working with a program at the moment in Queensland called Moveosity, and they're a leader in whole child wellness. So look up the Moveosity app, and in there, there are examples that you can bring straight away into your class if you don't have those resources of high energy, but also those 
de-escalations as well. So escalation, de-escalation are really rich and important in that whole child development because the children need those opportunities to grow, move, but also to learn those strategies for whole Tip six, reflect. So this is a great one. And how many times in our career have we had a chance to actually reflect on, on our teaching? We've had to be forced to stop. We've had to start again, but really reflect on what we wanted. And looking back and thinking about that time that we've been away from school, I want you to think about what you've taught yourself. Are you a brand new teacher? Do you have new skills? Have you taught yourself to do a particular activity? Have you lost weight? Have you gained weight? All that stuff comes into the way we're going back to school. What skills can you bring that will create a better flow for yourself? What, less, what skills can you bring that's gonna create a greater emphasis on your lessons? A greater emphasis on the outcome of your lesson, the greater emphasis on the whole program, right around your school. What will you do differently to create the future rather than improve the past? There's a big one for you. What can you do differently that's going to create a better future for you, but not only that, for your students in physical education? How can physical education look different today than it did 10 months ago, hey? Great question there. Think about how are you going to be a leader you admire and desire to be? That's a really cool one for you. How are you going to be the leader that you desire and aspire to be? What is, is, is it in your school that you can influence? What is it that is in your community that you can influence? What is it that in your state that you can influence? They're big, big questions there to think about. How can you love you more through the love and care you give to others? I know I'm posing, posing some big questions here, EP Dub, but how can you love you more? by giving all your love to others. How's it gonna make you feel? I gotta tell you, I'm full of passion. I am full of passion. If I, if I had to choose one massive tattoo, it would be a massive love heart and it would just encompass my entire body. But I love where I am right at the moment as a teacher, as a person, as a human. Not for the love I give myself, but it's for the love that I see the world with and I give to others. I would love for you to be able to find 10% of that and embed that into your daily routine, but also embed that into your life. What you give others creates a greater sense of love for yourself. And then my last one is deliberately creating you time every single day. You have to be deliberate in this. Everyone is there to take, 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 take. And you as a physical education teacher, I'm looking right down the barrel here, right at you, because I can see you. You give everything to every other person. But I want you to be super, super selfish. And I want you to create you time. Because this, that is the greatest gift that you can give yourself every single day. Make it something that becomes deliberate but automatic. And if we don't build it in, then we're gonna find we're gonna yearn for it. And that's part of our positive mindset, is our love for ourselves. All right, well, my last one is conclusion. So it's looking at this, and I want you to think about this. 
I want you to keep it real. There is no rule book that you're writing it as you go. There is no rule book. It doesn't exist for this. You're about to write it. You're about to become an author. Publish it. Put it on Amazon. Be number one by the end of this year. Keep it personal to you, to your staff, to your students. Know those names of students that you may have missed. Know those names of staff members that are brand new to your school. Welcome them in. Build that trust. Keep it safe so that students are seeing us move forward. Try to avoid the conversations of, how did you spend your time during the way away from school? They've had that, they've had those discussions. Moving forward, this is what life looks like. This is what our school looks like. This is what our community looks like. And this is what the exciting part about it is because now we can do these things. Keep it continual. Tomorrow we will, next week we will, next term we will, next year we will. If they say a, see a scalable model where learning's going, it's safe, it's continuous, reduction of anxiety, reduction of stress. Set yourself the goals, short term and long term. Really important there. And to use your knowledge of the past to influence your pathway for your future. So what are you going to take that you learnt and move it forward so you have an amazing future? Hey EPW, it's been an absolute pleasure in 2020 to bring you this and a few little tips about you going back to school. I wish you all the love and all the trust that you're going to have an amazing start to where you're going to be on your journey. And please do contact me if you need to chat we've been back but we haven't got the system right we're experimenting we're throwing out that rule book we we are designing a program when we see it and working with students when they need it but definitely please contact me and i'll sit down and have a chat with you and if it's nothing to do with school i love it if we go for a virtual bike ride i'd love it and you know what I'm hoping that I'll see you back at EPEW sometime soon. But for now, love you all. Speak to you soon.